Hey, what's up guys? Tony here, and I'm bringing you another retrospective commentary from the GT3 series and iRacing, and this is week 10 at Suzuka, and you'll see my buddy, my teammate, Tim here on the left-hand side. He's got himself a damaged roof, and I don't remember exactly how that happened. I think he got hit during the pace lap, but I'm sure what he's going to do is in the comment section below, he'll go ahead and refresh my memory as to what happened, but I'm pretty sure I remember that he got hit at the beginning of this race which um, was pretty tragic to be honest because what happens what seems to have happened this season so far is that either Tim or I will have a decent race and it's always at the expense of myself or Tim so if I have a good race usually Tim gets wrecked out of the race or if Tim has a good race and I usually get wrecked out of the race so very rarely this season did we have good races together which is unfortunate so speaking of that uh, what I want to do is I'm a little bit behind obviously because here I'm doing a video on week 10 and we're well into week 13 now or you know here it is Friday coming into Friday of week 13 so season 2 is upon us and so I want to get these last couple of videos these last couple of weeks out last couple of videos out so I can wrap up the season and what I might do actually is go back and really retrospectively go do the first three weeks or so because they do have the replays and I just discovered this is how how much of a noob I am when it comes to some of this stuff. I just discovered the race replays or the race reports are saved with the replays. So I didn't bother to go back to the first three weeks or so because the race reports disappeared off my top, my recent 10. And I didn't know they saved it with the replay. So when I found that out the other day, I was just because I forgot to write down all the information for, the, for this race specifically. So I was like, I'm not even going to worry about it. I'll just throw the race up there, get it out, whatever. But because I found that, I was like, sweet, that's awesome. So anyways, uh, I do want to talk about this track real quick. Well, as I always do, I should say. I went into this track knowing it a little bit. I'd raced it once before. I raced it with the uh, Prototype GT, I think is what it is. It's got the HPD, the Corvette, and the Ford GT. And I raced it with the Ford, the, not the Ford GT, it's the Corvette. And so I had a little bit of knowledge going into this track. And where Tim had to learn it and here's something that really really upset me boom right there I was pretty pissed off it's just you know it's like come on why you know there's, there's a thing about like f just fall in line get through this turn but sometimes people just have to do things that are retarded uh, and so he did that and you know I found my I went from like uh, I think was in 12th position here and I think I dropped down to 15th or 16th or something like that uh, anyways, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so I've raced here once before. So I kind of had a feeling, you know, I kind of had the lay of the land. But I just couldn't really put it together. Tim was running, he was running about a second faster than me, lap times on average. He was running like 102s, I, I think, he, or 102s. Uh, I think he hit two, 202s and I think maybe a 201, where I was hitting 203s and like a sprinkling of a um of a 20 gosh 201 no 202 2024 was my fastest lap time uh so anyways tim was just a little bit he was better at this track than i was i just there's certain parts of this track i just couldn't handle i think we all go through that i think there are certain tracks that just, just confuse us you know they sort of elude us we just don't get it and for me suzuka uh, is really been one of those tracks, which is really strange because it's a track that I have been racing for a long time, just not in I racing. You know, just like Gran Turismo for for instance, and Forza for instance. And it's funny because you find yourself attacking the tracks at a habit from that sort of Gran Turismo Forza mindset, and it doesn't work because you can't slide around corners like you can in Gran Turismo or Forza. You you have to take them like a real race car because it's a sim <laughs> like grand series with the ultimate the ultimate uh, sim i almost said the ultimate driving machine like that's bmw i got bmw on the mind because of the z4 but it grand series will totes itself as as like the ultimate sim experience basically i can't remember what their tagline is off the top of my head i know i'll remember it after the fact but uh it's really not the case and that's probably one of the reasons that, that is one of the reasons why i thoroughly enjoy i racing and the experience that I get out of it because it is a far more truer experience than what you get from traditionally console games. 
and probably previous you know incarnations of road racing games or just racing games in general so anyways um, that's sort of long story short that yeah I have some experience on Suzuka I just not I racing tons of I racing experience and it's just one of those things where some tracks like I've seen some tracks people just connect to you know, connect with just like yeah I've got this you know down and um, that's kind of the way it was for Tim on this track and all I'll do is I'll make sure to link in the description his video from this race as well not from this specific race but from this week as well because uh, he had a pretty good from what I remember he had a pretty good week I didn't really have that good of a week I mean this was my best race was this was the first race of the week for me and it was my best race and it was coming off and that's pretty much what I want to talk about because you'll see in this for throughout the rest of this race you'll see some of the things that hopefully well you'll hopefully see some of the things that I was, I'm talking about now this is coming off last week's race at Spa and this is the immediately the next day or maybe next two days or something like that maybe I think it was the very next day that I had my race with Tony McCollum where we had a really good battle for first and well for first place throughout most of the race at Spa he was in first I was in second and you know we exchanged like twice three times at most positions first and second and then um, towards the end of the race we got into it again and then I fatefully wrecked and ended my race early but like I said in the last retrospective commentary I did about Spa is I learned a lot about myself and I learned that uh, and I, g I gained the confidence that I can drive close to other drivers and I can be competitive and just be competitive and, and stay close and feel confident in uh, my abilities to avoid rear-ending someone, to avoid a wreck. And that was just kind of coming throughout the whole season, you know, sort of building up to these last, you know, three weeks, two weeks of the season, I guess three counting week 10. Uh, but really the confidence boost came from that run with Tony McCollum and uh, at Spa just because of the fact that we, we are running at times really close and so I was I had that high that sort of racing high the confidence high you guys might know what I'm talking about but I, I had that confidence high going into this track even though I didn't know it as well I mean I learned it I, I got it down I wasn't running as fast as I wanted to I'd want you know my goal is to run as fast as Tim maybe a little bit faster that's kind of how it goes I'm just like a smidge faster than Tim you know for the most part and I mean not to make it sound like I'm boasting but that's just kind of the way it goes but um, it was it was frustrating to be slower than Tim by a lot I like you know it's nice to be on par with the guy that you're running with your, your teammate and so that that kind of sucked to be like man that guy's just like blowing me away right now you know it'd be nice to just be on par with him um, but I'd learned the track and I'd, I'd, you know, like these last couple of turns there, they were a little hairy at first and I'll take us, I'll take us through the, the track in a minute. But, uh, going back to what I was saying, it was nice, you know, from this point on to have this battle with this guy in front of me and to feel confident, to know that I can, I can put myself in a position to, to make a pass if he makes a mistake or if I see an opportunity to make a pass I'll take it and you see me kind of sticking my nose in not unlike the guy who hit me did but unlike that guy I'm not putting my nose in there where I know I can't go and so I'm not gonna bully my way into a new position especially at position 14 of all positions I mean that's so far out of anything that matters that um, it's not worth a four times you know con car contact to gain 13th position I mean you know come on that's it's retarded so um, I'm gonna show actually that that car that went by scared the shit out of me because it was one of those situations where the spotter was late so I'm I'm intently looking at this guy and out of nowhere I see his car stopped on the side of the road and then you pass him by and you hear the spotter he's all like oh slow car on the right and you're just like thanks you know, like you're a week late. So, anyways, like going into this turn right here, you know, that was kind of what I'm talking about. You know, it's like I'm confident enough where I can stay like a tenth, two tenths behind him and not rear end him going into a very kind of a difficult turn. Because if you fuck it up, 
I mean, I'm going right into him if I break too late, if I lock up my brakes. Uh, and coming through these, you know, these uh, parts of the track where, you know, if you mess up, you either, you know, you're going to go off track, or you're going to go into him if you're going too fast. Right there, that last turn, you're going to kind of go off track, you know, because it's just the way the cars are moving. So I, I felt I was on a confidence high. And uh, I do hope, uh, yeah, me being a little aggressive right here, uh, I do hope you guys understand and can relate to that because uh, I've had a couple of those this season. One came after uh, Silverstone, after I had, you know, my best pass to date video. I put that up there and I actually gained a lot of confidence from that particular maneuver because I had been having troubles with my braking and, you know, locking my brakes up and just controlling the roof in general. And then from that point on, I gained a little bit more confidence. And then from the race with Tony McCollum at Spa, I gained a little bit more confidence, just sort of building on this, I don't know, ever increasing confidence in, in, a, in a sim racer, you know, racing through these complete seasons. It's just, you know, it just builds on you. And also, as I'm coming, you know, trying to go too wide with this guy, I let him go. But I also learned a little bit more about strategy. I've been watching, you know, people stream. I've been watching people race. And this is about that time that I really started to get into watching other iRacers stream. And uh, I'd always been watching videos from guys like Empty Box. And he put out a video. I think it was the Spa. I think he had a GT3 race at Spa and he was talking about defensive driving and, and picking the line that you want the other guy to run and just either forcing him to the outside or forcing him to the inside depending on what you want to do and that's also something that i had started to pick up and you saw me go i mean i gave him the inside line but i, I picked the outside racing line I, although i couldn't take advantage of it um i wanted to put myself into a position where i made him slow down more than me so I'm starting to think in terms of strategy, which is, it's really cool for me. Cause usually, like I said, coming from like a Gran Turismo Forza background, you're just kind of like, you know, here's wheel, grab wheel, drive fast, drift, you know, very Hulk-like just going to town and what you get is what you get. But when you have to start thinking about strategy and positioning um, and entry speeds and exit speeds, it, it, it's, it, I don't know. It's when you start thinking of it like that, you get a little, I don't know, you get a little happy, a little excited. Uh, but I'm constantly looking for that opportunity. You know, he, he, in the end of the last lap, he kind of got a little wiggle on him. So I was able to pull, you know, pull in, rein him in a little bit. Uh, and I noticed I was typically faster than him through the slalom here, through the S, this little snake S turn area. And again, I'm just constantly looking for that opportunity either to pass or waiting for him to make a mistake. But it's ever present in my mind and again like i said also strategies starting to get in there so it's it was really exciting once the race was over because i really wasn't thinking about it as the race was going on i was just racing but once the race is over and once i started thinking about it i was like man you know like i've, I've started to learn a lot more and it's not necessarily from you know just grabbing the wheel and running it was it's a byproduct of spending time watching people's videos or spending time watching people race or probably the most helpful thing is to watch streams to be honest i don't know if you guys watch anybody's streams but i started watching people's streams i started interacting in the streams and w when you when you start to build up a you know, even an online relationship with some guys guys like uh, I've talked with Tony McCollum, talked with this guy Matt Malone who streams a lot, talked with Tom McMoth, and the people he knows, like Shark, this guy Sharky, who I've never actually, besides a text-based conversation, I've never really had a conversation with him, uh, and even trading information with you know my teammates like Andy and Tim, uh, and talking to guys like Bob, Bob Train, uh, who's primarily an oval driver, but um, you saw me trying to trying to put myself in there. Got a little aggressive, but you know, didn't result in anything bad. But anyways, talking to these different guys and just sort of getting their approach and, and just sort of just sharing knowledge. That was what that's what starting I'm starting to pick 
Uh, I'm starting to pick up information. You see him do a little defensive positioning there. Uh, but I'm starting to pick up this information and just sort of see how different people approach certain tracks and uh, and their style of racing and just assimilating that into my own uh, sort of body of knowledge and that I, that I can see it's, it's starting to pay dividend as I have gone through these last few seasons because last season I actually uh, I took the season off for the most part I didn't race very much so my last full season was nearly two seasons ago now my C class year so I got was in C and I got promoted to B and I didn't really do much for B I don't I just wasn't really there wasn't anything B that I was totally jazzed for and uh, GT3 changed that to be honest and next season this coming season now um, I know I'll be into it again uh, but I will be looking to pick up a little bit more experience in the oval side of things so maybe I'll be doing some videos from the oval side of things for those of you guys who are um, not only road racers but oval racers as well so Anyways, I've kind of yammered on for a while now. Didn't really mean to do that because I'm trying to just talk about the race, but I can't help but talk about that part of the race, be that aspect of the race, and that aspect of my racing because it's it's been, you know, it's been these small steps towards just getting better, and you can't help but get excited when you feel like you're getting better. You know, it's a sucky situation when you race week in and week out, and you don't feel like you're improving or maybe you're wrecking a lot you know those are the times where you're just like man i am so oh yeah right here i was like i'm going for the pass you know i don't, I don't care you know well, i mean i cared i wasn't gonna wreck them or anything but i was going for the pass and, and thankfully it worked out for me so yay um but anyways you know it sucks when you're wrecking or you're getting wrecked or you're having off tracks, you're not being consistent, you know, and you're all over the place, it sucks. But when you start to find yourself having these moments where you're building upon your knowledge and you're, you're gaining confidence and it just, it, it spills over. And as a YouTuber and as someone who's started to get into streaming a lot more, that confidence spills over, you know, into excitement to stream or excitement to make videos or an excitement to just get on and, and play. Like when you don't have that excitement, you just don't feel like making videos you don't feel like playing the game that you're currently enjoying or you were enjoying or streaming said game so it it just sort of bleeds into the other parts of of your i don't want to say your life because that sounds really really hokey but uh to your gaming life i'll i'll try to kind of condense it or contain it in the the gaming aspect of of one's life so anyways uh I can't remember off the top of my head if I felt like that guy was slowing me down. Because, I mean, looking at my lap, last lap time at a 203.9, you know, I know that I can run faster than that because I did qualify with a 202.4. And um, I just, I don't know, obviously it was catching that guy. So there was a part of me, I think I was like, I think this guy's slowing me down. I could pass him. I just got to get by him. And you guys who, you know, who are... Uh, you know, experienced eye racers, you guys will know that there, if there's some, if there's a guy that, you know, like, I just got to get past this guy, because this is a hard track to pass. I know there's really only a couple places where I pass that guy's one, and then there's a 180 degree turn. I don't know the number or the name of the turn, excuse me for that, but uh, that's another one. You just kind of put, put your car in there and force them to the outside and um, sort of shoehorn your way in there. This is a few places you can pretty much pass other than that it's it's a little difficult some of these you know that's actually i noticed towards the end of the season here most of these tracks they're kind of difficult tracks to pass on you really have to pick your spots and be patient and that's paid off for me although it was getting a little antsy in my pants which is like antsy in my pantsy as i like to say in super troopers um so anyways uh at this point in the race i was feeling pretty solid to be honest i I was paying attention to my relative, you know, and I had the guy in the Marlboro cigarettes car behind me. I kind of had this, that feeling when you pass someone, especially someone you've been running really close with, that guy in the red and uh, white and red car. I figured, okay, that guy's going to be on my ass for the rest of the race. And uh, thankfully, he fell back, got passed by the Marlboro car. Don't know what happened to him. Uh, but then I, you know, right now when I look back, I'm like, holy crap, I got the, the Marlboro cars gone. Got a car off track right here. That was another one. Was I passed a car by and the spotter was like, "There's a car on your left. Go right." You're like, "No shit." 
I just passed him. Thanks for that. <laughs> the spotters aren't perfect, but um, so yeah, I noticed that I was I put my I put some serious distance between myself and the, the marble car, which makes me a very happy tiger. Um, Cause it's less pressure, you know, and you can really just focus forward. And that's what I've heard real race car drivers talk about. That's what I've heard sim racers talk about. Is once you get to a point, like if you're constantly looking behind you, it's sort of been a common theme in a handful of these retrospective commentaries. Is if you're looking behind you, you're not really paying attention to what's going on ahead of you, and you tend to slow down, speeds drop or increase, I guess. Um, so your your times go up. You're not running as fast as you can. You can see my last lap now is a whole second faster than while I was following that guy. Uh, so now instead of worrying about, uh, well, I mean, at the time when I was chasing this guy, I was worrying about passing him, I was stuck behind a slower guy. Um, but now that he's not behind me, I don't have to, and, and there's, I don't really have many people. You know, the guy's several seconds behind me now, the guy in the marble car. I can just focus forward and focus on you know, pushing in at this point in the race, you know, I already know we're like 20, 20 something minutes, 22 minutes into this race. Um, you know, the race is going to be ending here in the next, you know, eight minutes or so. So I know that I've got another, I don't know, five, six laps or so left. And I don't remember my relative where the nearest car was, was to me at this point. Uh, but it was just one of those, it's like, you know what? 11th position from a 15th not too bad it does suck that I got hit going into turn one of lap two I believe that's sort of the name of the game uh, the one you know but it's just basically it's like keep the pace if you can catch up to somebody who's you know ahead of you maybe you can make a pass who knows but just keep the pace that's kind of when I got to that point this point in the race you know I'm feeling very confident about the time that I'm putting down, the times that I'm putting down, uh, about the distance that I have with the cars behind me and the cars in front of me. It's pretty much no man's land at this point. You guys who are iRacers know this. So it's just about maintaining. I mean, there's the car in front of me, the next guy, and it's just a matter of, you know, just keeping keeping up what you're with what you're doing. So that was my best lap of well, the race right there. It was lap 11. Did a 202.5. That was um, as close to my qualify time as I could get. Because like, like I said, it was a 202.4 something. Um, which was by no, no means fast. I am like by no means a fast driver. I sort of equate myself to being a average driver. Depending on the splits maybe. I could be considered above average driver. Depending on the splits. But there were guys that were running like gosh if I remember correctly like 159s and that's kind of typically maybe it would be a couple seasons back typically where I'd fall three two to three seconds behind the aliens um, depending on the track though I find myself to usually be yeah about two seconds or so on average behind the, the aliens which is fine. I mean, you're like two seconds doesn't sound like a lot, but I mean, it's a lot. <laughs> when you have a driver who's two seconds faster than you per lap, uh, it's amazing how fast they catch up to you. Uh, but I'm pretty proud of that. I'm just like, okay, cool. When I can hit my my time, my qual time during, you know, like race training, we were on lap 12 and I've burned a, a significant amount of fuel. So I, I know my car's lighter than when I started the race, but... Uh, Typically, what I do, uh, actually, this is before I started to race with a like an actual reduced weight qualification setup. I would just run, I'd qualify with my my race trim because I want to know what's the fastest time I can put down with my race trim. So that's what I could expect during a race. I think it's unrealistic 
for someone to go out and and race um, like a qualification setup, and you know you might get a one, uh, I might get like a two o two o one five or whatever, like a second faster because my car's got like no gas in it. But I know that's not a lap time I can actually run, so it's nice to see where I stack up, at least on race trim, against people who might have run with the qualify setup and not on race trim. So if I run a 2025 on race trim and they're running and I'm in a field where guys are running like 2013s on virtually no gas, then to me I'm like okay, I I pretty much feel as if I stack up. Like I can I could run close to those guys on race trim because I know where I stand on race trim. Now I I can't guarantee that everyone else runs with a low weight qual setup but I know a lot of people do very very common from what, I've, from what I've noticed so it just lets me know that okay they are running like a 2015 or whatever and I can anticipate them at least running I don't know maybe like a half second slower maybe they're at a 202 flat so we're you know I'm within that range perhaps that just for me my own sort of I don't know mental racing game or whatever <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's, any, it's uh, maybe some way to psych yourself up. You're like, yeah, okay, I, I know that we're running about the same, but uh, it's what I do, and it's just one of those things. That I'll look at the grid and sort of take it in, like where that. And I'll look, I'll look, um, I'll look at the divisions as well. That's a good indicator. It lets you know where like those guys stack up. Like if they're division one, you're like, ah, oh, shit, we're in a top split. But if you see, like, since I'm Division 6, if you see, like, Division 4, 5, 6 through, like, 8, you're like, okay, we're either in the second or third split. More than likely the second if you get, like, Division, eh, I don't know, Division 4, maybe. So, anyways, uh, I, don't know, I think there's only a couple laps left for this race, and there's really not much else that goes on. So, um, what I'll tell you is that this track was kind of tricky especially this first turn it took me a while to get this first turn down um, I really had to not only remember it but figure out uh, I was wondering how I got to 10th place that's I think that's how I did it because I was like 10th place I, th I think I ended in this race in 10th <laughs> um, but that was a tricky turn because I mean you go in at kind of the wrong angle a little too fast you'll find yourself spinning out especially the rear-wheel drive car. So I'm kind of curious to know how the BMW will handle this track and all the other tracks that we've run so far this season and going into the next year, how they'll run uh, with that front engine setup. So quite curious. But this track, for the most part, was just sort of a, a relearning experience just because, I said, like I said, I ran it before in the Corvette, and so learning, relearning how to take these corners with the roof, that... Like at this point in the season, I, I had I felt pretty comfortable driving the roof, and I feel really comfortable driving the roof now. Uh, but it's it's really strange. What happens is you get into this like muscle memory, and the the way you ran the track before tends to come out in whatever car you're driving, despite your best efforts. You just have that muscle memory built in, and you run it like that. You're like, oh shoot! And so I had a couple of those early on in the week the day before and throughout the rest of this week where I was running it kind of like a Corvette and it was getting me into trouble so uh, it was nice to battle through that but it was just another something another one of those things I just observed about myself is that I just I happen to get into those muscle memory moments and I do that during a race too if I'm trying something out in practice I mentioned this time and time again during this the season uh, but what I do is I tend to fall back on a safe sort of way of driving even if I'm, if I'm trying something out in practice and maybe it's working but it's kind of risky I'm like okay I'll dial that back for the race all right so here we are we're on the white flag we're last lap and yeah so that guy that I passed on turn coming through turn one was in 10th place and he looks like he found himself off track and I was able to pull 10th back or back, well, the belt of pulling into the top 10. And you know what's funny? Even even though, like, the spotter is like, oh, you're in the top 10, he's really excited. There's not, like, a statistic for that. You know, it's top five. That's where you get the, you know, the distinction. 
but a top 10 finish is a really nice finish which uh it, it's kind of funny just because you know it's statistically it's not something they recognize but the spotter is all like you know you're in the top 10 good job buddy and you you get sort of uh you know if you're not i think if you're outside the top 10 you know the guy's like all right bring it back he's all like upset and uh, i think i was getting a little froggy at this point because you know it's the last lap i saw a car in front of me and i was like yeah we're gonna we're gonna go for this one not even to worry about it <laughs> Uh, but I made a couple of errors on this on this um, this last lap. I kind of was thinking, yeah, the errors sort of compounding these errors right now. But uh, I know I saw that car ahead of me, and I was thinking, man, I, maybe I could be nine. You know, ten and nine, it's like thirteen and fourteen. You know, in the grand scheme of things, it's not top five. It's not really worth wrecking or going off track or whatever for it. But yeah, I got a little. I could tell. You know, going looking back now, I was like, yeah, I got a little too aggressive. Yeah, take it, take it easy through that last chicane, and I'm gonna coast my way to the finish. And uh, like I said, finished at um, tenth position, and didn't have a stellar last lap, but whatever, it is what it is. Uh, but it was a good race. Unfortunately, uh, Tim did finish the race. He didn't get wrecked out of the race, but he finished several positions behind me, which sucks. So, uh, finished position was ten. Average lap time was a two hundred four point three nine five. Fastest lap time was a 202.5, and I had a grand total of uh, six incidences out of 15 laps, which sucks because that's like, what, two, almost two, a little over two per lap. So one of those, another track that, you know, I need to cut it down. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and I shall talk to you guys later.